the uh, coronavirus pandemic um, spreading around the world. The Melbourne Grand Prix was, uh, was cancelled. Um, and that same weekend, there was the call in the UK for engineering companies to help uh, produce ventilators from which the uh, Project Pit Lane uh, initiative sprung up, which Mercedes were there to support and to help where possible. UCL, University College London, um, got in touch with Ben Hodgkinson here at uh, HPP. Ben's our Head of Mechanical Engineering and he's a visiting professor at UCL and has got therefore contacts there. And UCL, in connection with their hospital next door, UCLH, were working on what equipment is it that helps COVID patients recover. And Professor Mervyn Singer, the head of the intensive care unit there, he'd identified that what was really helping patients was a CPAP device, which is a continuous positive airway pressure device. And this is a device that increases the oxygen content of the air that the patient's breathing, but increases the pressure of the airway, so helps inflate the lungs. As we all do, as curious engineers, you start Googling. We found a, um, a service manual for the original device. And then we went Googling to see if we could buy something. Um, I found a device on eBay um, in Nuneaton, of all places, which is uh, not far from my home, but the hometown of Richard Stevens, our operations director. So I WhatsApped him the eBay link and he purchased the device for just 50 pounds and brought it into the factory the next day. So this is the device that we bought on eBay, 50 pound purchase. So this is the, the CT scan that we got straight away of the device that showed us the inside details and helped us take some dimensional information from it. So this gave us our first insight here at Brixworth to the device that we needed to make. The key message from UCL to get medical approval was copy something that already exists. At which point our whole focus was on, we need to copy this. We need the output to be exactly the same. Let's not be clever. Let's just copy it to gain the original medical approval. And we worked out that with the needs of every hospital, it was about 10,000 devices that would be needed. And we looked at the ramp up of COVID cases in the UK. We looked at what had happened in Italy that appeared to be about two weeks ahead. And we quickly came to the conclusion, we need to make these at a thousand a day. If they're really gonna help, if, they need, if they're gonna be here before the virus is hitting large numbers of people, we need to make these at a thousand a day. To achieve that thousand a day, um, Richard Stevens and his team assessed every single aspect of the business. A lot of the parts were made externally. There were about three parts made internally. The main body, the main complex, was made here at Brixworth and a couple of the other parts within the device. The rest of the parts went to specialist new suppliers to us um, that had got the, the right type of lathe. To make a thousand a day, the tack time needs to be very small and the precision needs to be needs to be consistent. We wanted to keep the quality that the lead time um, gave us, so we repurposed more machines. So more of the machines that were previously making pistons and turbos and ancillaries were repurposed to make the parts for this device. We were asked by the MHRA to improve the, the oxygen usage. So for the, the flow rate that the patient requires at the pressure to inflate the lungs, we wanted to spend less oxygen because it's the oxygen in the jet pump of the device that, that powers the pump. In addition to improving the flow device, we helped UCL improve uh, the patient system. This is where uh, Matthew Devine and Pierre Godoff stepped up and they developed a very simple uh, device that went in the adapter between the peak valve and the filter. And it's just a little silicon flap that naturally sits at about 30 degrees to the horizontal and just moves enough when there's 10 litres a minute and then moves back. But then when the patient exhales and there's over 100 litres a minute, it moves completely out the way without putting any excess pressure drop on. Mervyn Singer did the, um, the, the clinical trials with some well patients down at UCL Hospital. He was amazed. He was absolutely blown away by how the hardware and the flow flag had made it easier for him to set up 
and that's where we achieved the 70% the improvement in, in oxygen requirement for the, for the patient settings. This type of industry loves the deadline of you've got to make it by then, otherwise you lose the race. In this case, otherwise you're losing the opportunity to help the NHS, to help, to help poorly people. This is the finished product. This is the device that we made 10,000 of. There are about 24 components go into this assembly. That's compared with 25 and a half thousand parts that go into a full power unit that goes racing in the back of the Formula One car. But we used exactly the same process, exactly the same ISO 9001 process for guaranteeing every part. The extension on the pit stop restaurant, that was repurposed. So Tommy Hughes set that up. So did a wonderful job of setting up the arrangement, again watching social distancing protocol. And to help with that, Richard Kessler, who's our uh, automation expert, he got in touch with his contact. We had some robots carrying the devices from the sub-assembly area down to the test area and then from the test area across to the dispatch area. Please remove four boxes and replace with them, please. In total, there are about 12 engineers working on it from the design stage through to the development and testing stage. When we got into the assembly stage, Richard pulled people from all around the business. We had about 200 people working to manufacture and to assemble the devices, working on shifts, so three shifts through the day. The day and night we were manufacturing and assembling these parts with drop-offs every eight hours um, to, to goods in to make sure that the process flow kept going. Every time an assembly had been completed and it was put on one of our AGVs, the computer would update the number that had been assembled that day and the total number. And the same as they successfully left the test lanes, um, they go on to the AGV and the computer would update. We took a few days to get up to our thousand per day, but we peaked at 1,230 per day. So in the last few days, we were making it over 1,000 a day, and we completed on the 15 our 10,000 target. The collaboration worked wonderfully. Everybody wanted to achieve the same thing. UCL, um, the conversations with them were pretty much every hour, with Tim Baker, who led the mechanical engineering team there and sorted out all the patient kit, uh, with Rebecca Shipley, who heads up um, UCL, um, medical engineering group with Mervyn Singer when we wanted to understand the breathing cycle. You know, Mervyn said, what is it like for people when they're breathing in and breathing out with COVID? So that we could then create a breathing cycle for Nigel's simulation and to set up the test rig more precisely. And of course, with the government as well. So with um, Cabinet Office initially, who funded the initial 100 that we made, um, and then the Department of Health and Social Care. So we would have three calls a week to discuss the progress. How were we getting on? How would they be distributed? For us, it started on the 18th of March, and then we finished the 10,000th part on the 15th of April. So less than one month from start to finish, but a huge achievement and something that everybody here is, um, is super proud of. From the 18th of March, um, this business adapted to doing projects for the respirator challenge, looking after social distancing. Since then, Project One has commenced activities on site, Formula E has commenced activities on site, and then Formula One commenced. And the learning we got from doing the respirator project helped prepare the site for more people coming in. Motorsport can apply itself to the medical industry. I think the, uh, the requirement for medical devices for uh, testing equipment for equipment to help clinicians do their job, think about the patient rather than the, uh, the equipment, um, is something that can be applied. There's great precision required, there's high quality, and there's, a, there's an understanding of simulation uh, required. I think it is possible for HPP and the motorsport industry to carry on contributing to the uh, medical engineering industry. And just observing the system being used um, on a patient taught us a lot about understanding the situation, understanding the application, understanding that it's not just one component, it's the total system. That's helped us with our mechanical engineering. For example, the on-off knob. We thought it'd be okay to increase the number of degrees of rotation from on to off, but actually having to take your hand off partway through the rotation 
um, made it harder for Mervyn to do when he was doing his clinical trials. When the BBC article broke on the Monday about achieving MHRA medical approval for the first device, our partners from Patronus got in touch to say, can we help, can we pass the information on, as did Mercedes-Benz in the US and in Stuttgart. And so we started releasing information to them earlier in a controlled way, letting them know that it would probably change a little bit. And so we immediately started transferring information. The original service manual went first that we'd found on the internet. The inside information as to why we were doing it and what the benefit was as we believed it. And they got the drawings first to um, make sure that they could get going as soon as possible. It was the Patronus team that have then taken that data. The team that support us in Formula One, they took that data and they produced in Malaysia and um, achieved medical approval for that. Using the UCL portal, we made all of the engineering data available on a license basis. And when I say all, I really do mean all. So we made sure that there wasn't one little bit of information left here that wasn't available on that portal. So drawings, CAD models, machine types that were used to make it, lead times, tack times, material types, and then the whole assembly manual, and the schematic as well for the patient circuit, all the pressure drops, all the characteristics that were okay and not okay from our experience from all our clinical trials, the test rig, absolutely everything. I think it's 1,800 organisations that have now had access to that data. It was one of the easiest decisions for all of us in this project. This journey from the 18th of March to the 15th of April has been full of surprises, full of learning about making something that's different but using the existing skill set and the existing infrastructure. And so that helps you learn about your capabilities, your own personal strengths and weaknesses. I think the huge, huge achievement is now when we look back on it, it's less than a month from buying something off eBay, reverse engineering it, getting approval twice for the prototype and then the developed device that was 70% better and then this incredible industry making 10,000 devices, 10,000 good quality devices that you'd be happy to use yourself if you were poorly. If I look back now to think of what was achieved, that's gobsmacking. I think the biggest moment though along that journey was the point that the news article broke that we'd got approval that it was the lead story on the radio BBC radio the lead story on BBC news that lead story aspect and the emotional uplift in this business when everybody received texts, whatsapps, phone calls, emails from friends, family, far-flung colleagues saying well done what you're doing, I'm proud of what you're doing. I think that's one of the uh, strongest moments for us um, and I think everybody now reflects and looks back and goes wow that was an amazing achievement, I am so proud to have worked on that.